I love to run dogs because when you're out in the wilderness, uh, you and 12 dogs is it's a very sublime experience. Mellows you out a little bit, seems. What some describe as sublime, of outstanding spiritual, intellectual, or moral worth, others might call long and lonely. The Iditarod, the most famous dog race in the world, takes off this weekend with 33 mushers sledding 1,000 miles, more than 1,000 miles, along the wild Alaskan landscape. You know, the concept of dogs pulling people across the frozen tundra is a centuries-old custom for the sourdough state. The invention of the airplane doing little to put an end to it. However, the invention of the snowmobile in the 60s kind of made a mushing lose a little bit of its lure. Not wanting to lose it completely, the Wasilla Knick, uh, I think it's Knick, Wasilla Knick Centennial Committee came up with the idea of the Iditarod as a way to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Alaska Territory. Chairman of that committee, Dorothy Page, mapped out the route over historic trails, ones once used during the gold rush and to deliver mail. The 1967 inaugural centennial race was only 56 miles long. Six years later, it was lengthened to more than a thousand miles, and it took three weeks for the winner to finish it. Well, the fastest I did rod was run in 2017, finishing in just eight days and three plus hours, give or take. This year is the 50th anniversary of that long distance race and Idaho will be represented once again by Sandpoint resident, not once again, just Idaho once again, but Sandpoint resident Jed Stevenson, this will be his first. He's an American army brat, grew up all over the country and around the world. He went to school at BYU Idaho and he has been in Sandpoint for the last seven years. The ER nurse and dad to twins said his passion for mushing started at a young age. I had a dream to run Iditarod since I was nine years old. My dad read to me, uh, books by Gary Paulson, um, specifically Dog Song was the name of the book. It was about an Inuit boy who uh, learned the traditional ways of dog mushing as snow machines were kind of replacing the sled dog. And that kind of uh, sparked my imagination of dog mushing and ultimately running a Iditarod. That imagination yet kept running. Jed did dog tours to pay for college, and when he graduated, he headed up to Alaska. There he found a mentor who'd run that Iditarod more than 20 times. Some good experience. So six years ago, he got his own dog team together and Jed started racing. And after proving he could survive and keep his dogs alive on such an excursion, Jed is now ready to race in his first ever Iditarod. I'm also an ultra marathon runner. And so everything I ask my dogs to do, I'm willing to do myself. I, I like to think that I embrace the same spirit that my dogs are possessed by. Um, and that kind of unifies us. And we kind of all work together to get down the trail. Jed said he's going to get about six hours a day off the sled. And it won't be spent sleeping. No, nope, the dogs will sleep. But Jed will be busy feeding them and massaging them so they can be ready for the next stage. He says he'll get about an hour or two of rest. The Iditarod, Iditarod starts this Sunday, and we're going to be following along with Jed as he chases the dream he's had since he was a kid, a journey that is much bigger than the race itself. I think my biggest message to the world is when you follow a dream, a dream is much deeper than like a childhood idea. I mean, if you can grab a hold of your form of Iditarod in your life, um, it can help kind of correct a lot of the things that you struggle with. And I think... Dreams are the best antidepressant in the world.